G'day everyone, uh, thought I'd pop in and have a quick chat about some leaked images for the Nikon uh, camera, the new Z camera have just been leaked. Uh, some full images, so I'm going to give this a couple of minutes for people to pop on board uh, and then we can have a chat about them, but it's going to be really interesting. So if you're in the chat, just say hi. G'day. Um, let me just see if I can bring this up. I'm having an issue with my mouse for some reason, I don't know why, what's going on? See if I can grab something else. Yeah, I'm having an issue with my mouse. Oh, that's working. I don't know what's going on with the mouse. No, it doesn't matter. Um, so let's see who's in here. Ron is here. The Panda's here. Uh, yeah, YouTube is here. Photo Mix here. Ron Flores is here. Um, Mr. You, you YouTuber is here as well. Rod five uh, nine five six nine saying hello as well. Chris Amir is here. Um, Kerwin's here, Jim's also here. Uh, Photomix says, I bet you want to pop in and talk about the new Nikon. Yes, that's what we're going to discuss, uh, Ike. Um, Studio's here. Uh, Heldon's here. William's also here from Dublin. Jesse Travers is here as well, and David Johnson's here as well. Uh, this is going to be a really quick one today. I'm just going to take you through the actual full leaked images of the new Nikon camera, and we can have a discussion about that. Um, I'd also like to know your thoughts and stuff like that about it as well. So... Uh, let me know what you think as we start to go through this. I'll come back to a little bit of a chat about it as well uh, that we can go through in a minute after we've gone through these. Um, but I thought it might be really interesting to have a look at this because um, some ways it looks nice and other ways it, 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 the issues I think could be better. But let's start going through the camera. So this has been released. Now we'll put the link to this. It's Nakashita, Nakashita I think, have released uh, this camera. I'm not sure where they've got it from. Um, but they have released the full frame res, well, the, the full frame pictures of the actual camera itself. So let's go over and have a look. Um, so this is basically the front of the camera. So you can see over here that, no, no beer panda. <laughs> um, there's, there's two function buttons on the front. Obviously this is your lens mount uh, area here. And I've noticed on the front too that this is the only control wheel I think that um, it, it's got. So I don't think it's gonna have the two control wheels. And we'll look at that when we look over the other side in a minute, but it looks like it hasn't got the two control wheels. It looks like the other one is probably gonna be an exposure compensation wheel. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean about that in a minute. Um, but this, so this is basically the whole mount at the front. Uh, like I said, you've got the two function buttons that you can probably program to whatever you liked. Uh, this will be to obviously um, check uh, or fix the EVF to your eyes if you wear glasses and things like that. Uh, I'd say what that's for. And this is your control dial. So this is the front part of the camera. Uh, if we go up to the next stage, which is the top of the camera, you can see here um, everything that it's got on the top too. So you've got your normal dial on here. It looks like you, you've got three um, sections there that you can do different settings on your camera that you can set. The same as what's similar to what Sony have, although my Sony only have two. You've got three here that you can set different settings for. I sometimes use those buttons for setting different movie functions and that's the way I run with these. I'm actually setting them with things like uh, running 4K, uh, running 1080p or running slow motion. So I've got that uh, set on there as well. You've also got your full manual control of PSA and M and then you've got a full auto mode uh, on there as well. Uh, it has this EVF and I'll show you another picture I think later on shows that uh, with it on. I'm not sure if it does actually. Uh, we'll have a look but that's that's the new uh, control um, window um, similar to what Fuji has in their X-H1 uh, as well. Now this is where I was saying I think this button or this wheel here is probably an exposure compensation wheel. I don't think it's going to have the two and that's that's probably a problem because um, I noticed even on the A7S which is, which is Nick, uh, Sony's cheapest version of their full frame cameras now that you do have on the back you have got uh, one control wheel here and you've also got one in the front. So if you're shooting manual, which is what I do, you've got a wheel at the front I usually use for uh, aperture, and the one at the back I use the, um, uh, what's that, is they saying they're not seeing the images? Oh, oh, hang on, I'll have to go back. Oh, okay, hang on a second, let me just see if that does it again. Is that going on to it? Oh, there they are. Oh, so was there no images there? I can only see the camera through your glasses. 
<laughs> oh no. Oh, guys, well, bear with me. Look, I'm just going to stop this, and then as soon as this is uploaded, I'm going to start again. So I'll probably delete that first. Hi everyone, uh, looks like we've got to start again. I'm having an issue with my mouse for some reason. I'm using the uh, Apple mouse and it's not actually changing the windows if I click on them. Now, now it is. I don't know what was going on, uh, so I am going to cut out that first part of the show. Uh, so we're going to start again. I I've noticed just uh, in the last few minutes, I've seen that um, this Nikon, I think it's Nokashina or some Nokashita has released full uh, images of the Nikon camera. Uh, I'm going to switch over to it now and we can have a discussion about it because I'd love to know your thoughts as well. Um, so let me just scroll back to here and hopefully now the images are going to update. Yeah, that's better. Uh, so let me know you can see them all right in the, in the uh, questions here. All right, so let's have a look. So this is the Nikon full frame uh, Z camera that's just been announced. Uh, you can see here that there's two uh, function buttons um, where you can obviously program different things. Uh, for instance, if you wanted to use something to change one of the features in the menus, you can use these buttons. They're similar to the custom buttons on the Sony cameras, which you know are all over the place. All of these custom buttons on the Sony camera can be set to different things like IAF, uh, things like that. Um, so there are at least two custom buttons that you can set and as we go through I'm not sure if there's any more because I just got this now and I thought we'd go through it together uh, so we can have a look uh, and see ourselves. Um, this too seems to be the only wheel on the camera that you could uh, use to change your uh, aperture or your shutter speed. Uh, unlike the uh, Sony camera where you have two of them, and I'll discuss that in a minute because I think that's a bit of a downer actually. Uh, but apart from that, let me know what you think about the design of this. This is obviously where you can control the EVF uh, for if you wear glasses and things like that, a diopter, uh, so that can be changed there. Uh, this is your, your lens mount, and obviously you can just see to the, the size of the actual uh, lens mount opening here as well. So that's the first um, picture. So let's go through to the next one. Now this is the top. So here you can see that this is your, uh, your control dial. You've got three um, saveable uh, areas here, and I use those uh, in the Sony cameras for setting things like your video. And I have one set on 1080p, one set on 4K, and then one set for slow motion. Uh, so I've done that for those there. Um, but on the Sony, you've only got uh, two, but you have got more in the menu that you can actually bring up inside. Uh, I think it's six all up or something. Here, you've got the three actually on that uh, shutter wheel here, or that, that wheel, control wheel. You have got full program programmable auto. That's the same really as the Sony. Uh, you've also got the P, S, A, and M. Um, and like I said, you've got the three uh, ones where you can save there. You've got this LCD screen, which is very similar to the X-H1, um, which I think is, is quite nice. I mean, I'm not sure whether you need it, seeing you've got an LCD anyway. Um, but, you know, it's interesting. Keep firing away questions, guys, because I will come back and answer those with you as well. Um, you've also got, obviously, the record button over here if you want to record video. ISO's here and exposure compensation button is there and your on off is coming through here. Now I think this is probably going to be your exposure compensation. Uh, the reason why I'm thinking that is because if you look at say the Sony, the way the Sony's are, now this is the a7 III. Um, on the Sony a7 III you have got one wheel at the back, let me just see if I can get that in focus, you've got one wheel at the back and you've also got one at the front. Uh, that you can use. Uh, but as well as that, you've also got the exposure compensation here, uh, which is in the same position that the Nikon camera is uh, if you're looking at it there. So I've got a feeling that that probably is an exposure compensation wheel, which is a bit of a bummer because it means you're going to have to use some other way if you're shooting full manual to control uh, aperture and shutter speed independently. Whether you can use the wheel on the back or something like that, I'm not sure. But it is way better to have the two control wheels. Uh, I think that's a bit of a dumbed down version and I don't understand really why Nikon would have done that. Um, if that's not, that could, I mean, I'm also thinking too, perhaps if you press the exposure compensation button down and then rotate that, that, that may then become an, an exposure compensation wheel. So that could be some way of, 
making it a dual function type button. We, we're going to have to wait and see when this is actually um, released or announced to see which way they run this. If it has only got the one wheel at the front, I think that's a real letdown actually on the camera, to be honest, um, <coughs> because I really do like to change the, the exposure, uh, sorry, the aperture and the uh, shutter speed very, very quickly using those dials. It's, it's a pain when you go to the A6500 and you can't do that anymore. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a bummer. But I do think that's probably gonna be an exposure compensation wheel. Uh, you can see the diopter here. Um, you've got your, your normal, um, your normal uh, flash mount. Now if we go onto the back, uh, you can see here that they've got your play, uh, your deletes, if you want to delete files. You've got the AF on button, and this is also uh, obviously where you can choose if you want to go between stills and video. I'm not sure whether you'll be able, probably able to uh, change this to be back button focus or something like that. Or perhaps you can use your AF on as your back button focus. Uh, you do have a joystick. Um, that's your info, obviously, if you want to get help, I suppose. Um, you've got this wheel here, or, or I think it might be basically where you'll have to actually change your um, shutter speed or something like that. I'm not sure how it's going to work if that is not a um, uh, able to sh change shutter speed on that dial up there. Uh, if it is just an exposure compensation, it's going to be a bit of a bummer. Uh, magnifying your menu. Uh, obviously that will also bring up your magnifying and this is our think where you're going to change your your speed uh, between single or um, multiple shots uh, or timer will all go from that one um, actually there uh, this one here is from the front so it's showing it with the uh, lens attached and there's a couple of lenses that I'll show you at the end of this because uh, it's it's interesting to see the lens that's on this one this is the uh, what's that that's the 24 to 70 f4 uh, 72 inch mount and a uh, thing there if you want to put NDs on there. Um, again, this is the adapter attached. Now the adapter I'll show you at the end. So that's that's the adapter attached onto the camera. So it's going to be interesting to see how that functions uh, as well. Uh, the back screen, um, this is looking at, again at the back screen. I'll click onto the next one because you'll see how the back screen folds similar to the Sony cameras. It's not a fully articulating screen. Uh, it's only partly, out well, it just folds up or down, I suppose, although they're not showing it going down, but I'm sure it would also go down, uh, not just up. But the next one is interesting because um, it shows, just let me come back to here. Um, you can see here, these are your lens doors. It's HDMI. Uh, I'm not, don't know yet whether that's going to be full HDMI or not. Uh, you've got your USB here, microphone and headphones are up there. And I can't make out what that one actually is there um, and I'm not sure what that one is down there either I'm not quite certain what those uh, things are this one here shows the uh, actual LCD on the top uh, it would take really no power so that's not going to be an issue uh, power wise uh, and I want to come back to you on the questions here too about whether you think it's worthwhile to have that um, as you know do you think that's a nice thing to have or because of the LCD works or the viewfinder works so well on these mirrorless do you need that uh, I'd be curious to know what you think about that um, I still prefer the A9 layout and I think that's the best way Sony have gone I'm hoping their future cameras have that A9 layout of having everything there but it seems to me that they could have easily added another uh, dial particularly to give you your exposure compensation and your um, uh, say for your shutter speed and your aperture as separate dials and that's that's a bit of a bummer um, looking at the lenses here um, you can see that this is the f4 let me just come back my mouse is playing up let me just come back there we go um, yeah it's the 2470 f4 uh, so this is the lens, obviously, that they're going to announce uh, from the beginning. Um, this is just another version of it. So you've got, uh, if you want to use a manual, you can actually just use the switch going across uh, there as well. Um, this one here is the 51.8. So obviously they're going to release the um, 2470 f4 and the 51.8 at the beginning. Um, because these are the two lenses there that are being announced. Oh, and there's also a 35 I just noticed too. So there's a 35 1.8 as well uh, that's going to be announced at the same time. So it looks like they're going to get three lenses right from the beginning. The 2470 f4, uh, the 51.8 and the 35 1.8. So that's not too bad if you want to run uh, those lenses as well. Uh, and this is the adapter itself. 
uh, that you're going to be able to use for the uh, other Nikon lenses that uh, hopefully, I mean, they're, they're focusing and everything will work uh, fantastic. But it's, it's interesting. So I'm going to open it up to questions because I'm really curious to know what you guys think uh, about this um, because I'm not sure I like the particularly the dial. I don't like that dial uh, not having a separate um, aperture and uh, shutter speed dial. Uh, apart from that, let's open it up to comments because I'd be curious to know what you guys think. Um, so let's see what people are actually saying here. Um, now, if you are watching later on, I'll delete that first bit out, guys, because um, it, it didn't work. It, something was wrong with the mouse. It just wasn't working. So I'll probably cut that f last that first bit off. Um, now, let's have a look. Um, so I want to see what you guys are saying about it. Panda say Nikon forever. <laughs> Share your screen. I oh, know. Sorry, I'll trick it. it. It wasn't working. My mouse wasn't clicking over. Uh, I'm not sure what was happening there. Um... I'm going to miss all this because I'll forget that. I'll skip all this later on. Um, so where does it start? Uh, uh, the panda said, I uh, see some Fujifilm features and some Sony features when it comes to design. Yeah, it sort of is a mix, a mix and match, isn't it, of... Um, Sony and Fuji, I think. Uh, it's not really showing the grip. I think the grip's quite big on this camera, though, so the grip obviously is fairly uh, nice. It will be fairly nice to hold, uh, which is a plus. Um, like I said, it's a real letdown with that design, though. Um, <laughs> Helen said, get a Razer mouse. They're infinitely better. That's the first time a mouse has ever failed, and I wanted to hop on quickly. Uh, I don't know why that actually happened. Um... What else have we got? Kenny said, wow. Um, Darren S said, he beat you by 10 minutes, dude. Who's that? Um, Kenny said, you really uh, don't like to make beautiful cameras. <laughs> no subdial command. Yeah, I know. It's a bit of a bummer, really. Uh, Studio 96 said, in M mode, the rear wheel is for aperture or shutter. Yeah, and that's the thing. I, I, I'd say that's probably what it is, uh, Studio. Um, you won't have the choice of doing one or the other. It's going to be a little bit like using an A6500, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't like that at all. I don't know why they would have gone down that track at all. Um, Langston said, interesting fun uh, placement for the function buttons. Yeah, that's quite common with some of the Nikon cameras. The ones, the D4S I had had uh, a function button in that sort of location. My uh, G GH5 also did. So it is quite a common place for having those function buttons. Um, I prefer the way Sony is, though, basically. I love the way phony, uh, Sony works. Phony. <laughs> Someone's going to ca catch on on that. Uh, I should, shouldn't watch so much of Angry, should I? Um, the, I love the way the function buttons are here because, basically, when I'm pressing the shutter button or whatever, I can easily get to these buttons. And if I'm using back button focus, I can also hold down these function buttons as well. And there's also function buttons on the back everywhere, uh, even one over here. So they're sort of all over the place. Uh, I do really like... Uh, the way the Sony fun uh, function buttons are. Um, Rick said, uh, this is cool, more the merrier. Hopefully this forces Sony to lower prices and lenses. Well, let's hope so. Um, Thomas said, your sub screen is not showing. I'm not sure what that means, Thomas. Hopefully it's working now. Um, no video dial. No, there's not. Apart from that dial at the back where you can just switch between uh, your stills and uh, the other thing. Uh, stills and video. Um, DS Greg said, looks like they copied Sony all over the place. Interesting. You think that? I think it looks more probably like a Fuji, to be honest. Well, it's a mix between the two, I think. Um, I love Daniel said Fuji. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. CRJ Lion says, why does it have auto mode? Anyone using this camera? Well, even the Sony has auto. I mean, they do have an auto mode, like it's in green there. So it has got an auto mode. My A9 hasn't got an auto mode though. Yeah, yes it has. Um, so even the, they have an auto mode. So, I mean, remember they're probably putting this one as their intro camera. This doesn't mean this is going to be their high-ended cameras, but a lot of cameras do have auto modes on them, so. Um, 
Chris said, looks well built, typical Nikon style. I think it looks reasonably well built too, actually. Um, Rick said, I hope the LCD screen is as the Fuji. Well, it seems to be, Rick, looking at that. It looks very similar. Um, that um, That's not an exposure comp wheel, man. What do you think it is, Ike? Do you think it is for... Um, but it's an interesting placement then if that's the case. I'm hoping you're right. I'm hoping that that is uh, the ability to, to have your second wheel, which will be for your aperture and your f-stop. Um, and it may then change if you press that exposure compensation wheel down. You know that on here, if we come back over here, uh, let me just see if I can get to this. Where was it? It might be that um, this will change depending on what how, if you press that down. If you're in aperture mode on the camera, if you press that down, that they men may just change aperture. So if you're in full manual mode, you may be able to use the two wheels, which is this one and this one. We have to wait and see, and I'm hoping that's the case, Ike. Um, let's come back to questions. The wheel must have multifunction, and yeah, I'm starting to think that that could be the case, and I hope that that is the case. Um, and I think that might be the case too if you press that button. Um, very happy with the Sony a7 III, I don't blame you, it's great. More than one function of, of that wheel, I think that's probably correct Chuck and I think that's what they're going to do. I've got a feeling if you press that exposure compensation button down and you're on A, it will change to exposure compensation. Which could be quite smart actually. Um, <coughs> Kerwin says, uh, that will be the shutter wheel. Fatomiak said, if you know how Nikon works, you press the plus minus button and then adjust your exposure compensation. Okay, thanks. So you're saying that's what that is, Ike. Um, but the thing was, when I had the D4S, it, oh, perhaps it did work that way. I can't remember because it's been so long since I've shot that now. Uh, Gene said, I still like the Sony layout better. Costa said, enjoy your videos. Thank you so much, Costa. Apart from my mouse problems at the beginning. Um... Rick said, I'm thinking that button is for all exposure values. Interesting. Uh, Photomix said, this is why we people who know Nikon talk about Nikons. Ooh, nasty. Uh, Chuck said, uh, remember, <laughs> remember, I got used to shoot Nikon. Um, Chuck said, info shows settings currently in use. Yes, it does. Yep. Uh, Kerwin said, um, yep, to Photomix. Mike said, uh, yo, he's just saying hi. Too smart, the hinge is on the left, it flips out. I noticed that, so does it flip out? Let me check back there, because I did notice that. Um, let me come through here. Because it does, when you look at that, look like there's a hinge on that section through here. Um, which is interesting, I'm not quite sure, not quite sure what's going on there. Um, yeah, I don't know. You see there's a, a, a little latch coming through there, but, but when you're seeing it open down here, no, it's not. No, it's not. That, that's just actually on the, um, on the monitor itself. You can see there's the hinge actually there, so it doesn't open sideways. It's not fully articulating. It's not a fully articulating screen. Um... Yes, I hope, the, I hope the screens and everything are refreshing right, guys, because my mouse is all playing up, so I'll have to have a look at this when I finish. Um, <laughs> Fodemik said, I respect David, but he's way off on these dials and what they do. Uh, yeah, well, we'll soon know, I can, and you're probably right. I think that looking at that, it probably is dual function, because if that's a button that you can hold down, obviously that has to be uh, turning into exposure, compensa uh, into, uh, exposure compensation only when it's held down. Um, Rick said, uh, did they show how many megapixels? No, they haven't said that yet. Uh, Too Smart said, never mind. Um, people say it looks like the Sony and the Fuji. What is it supposed to look like? It's a camera that needs controls uh, where each brand puts them. I'm not sure what that means. Let me read that again. People say it looks like the Sony. 
and the Fuji. I, I think it does look like a mix, to be honest. Uh, what is it uh, supposed to look like? It's a camera that needs to controls everywhere. Yeah, and they are. How much can you actually change it? And that's and that that's a very good point. If you know how Nikon works, you should know that the front dial can adjust aperture and, and the top one of the shutter and holding buttons changes the function. Okay, thanks, yeah, which is the same as what Ike said. Uh, thanks for that, guys. It's been so long since I've shot Nikon, so uh, I've probably just forgotten. Um, <laughs> the dial wars have begun. I love it. Uh, looks like a Sony camera. Kerwin said photo Miak. Um, oh, it's jumped. Um, where did that go? Not sure. No, they didn't say how many megapixels. Um, Kerwin said photo Miak. Yeah, I knew that would be the shutter wheel. That's uh, always been the way uh, Nikons have worked, obviously. If you hold the plus, you get the exposure dialed in. Okay. Um, it's actually closer. It does look a little bit like the G9 too, Ike. I agree with you, it does. Uh, it's a mix between all of these cameras, to be honest. Um, Ken Wheeler referred to it as the douche dial. I wonder why. There's nothing douchey about it. I mean, the dial itself is not any really different than the Sony dials, if you look at it. There's, there's still an auto on the uh, Sony dials. I'm not sure why he was saying it was a douche dial. I don't really understand that. Um, Ben said, who wants F4, really? Well, F4 is not so bad with these high ISO cameras now, Ben. Uh, the faster lenses will come, but F4 is not such a bad thing nowadays. Um, it would be cool if, there, if the lens were easily adaptable to Sony system. Interesting. Uh, LCD screen is really not needed. The back screen and the viewfinder are enough. I don't think it's needed either. Uh, it's not something that I would need to have because I can just look through the EVF. Um, and I'm always looking through the EVF or the LCD screen anyway. So you're right, I don't think I'd actually need it, but they, they, I, I would have preferred them to put another dial up there or something, to be honest, about that. Um, an adapter for native lenses, see all the contacts in the adapter, perfect. Yes, it is. And that's what we're saying here. Let me just see if this will switch over. Um, you can see here all the contacts. Um, so hopefully it'll work really well. Uh, I mean, because it's been designed by Nikon, you would expect that it would work really well. Um, but we've got to wait and see. That's the difference, I suppose, between the Sony one where they're using third-party adapters. Uh, this has been adapted by Nikon from the ground up. So, you know, that, that's a good thing. <coughs> um, I'll make a video about this tomorrow. That'll be good and interesting. Can't wait to see it. Um, once this has Nikon's colors and works great with OCF, with IAF, and face detection focus points for Medge to Ed, I'm pre-ordering. Um, fail on the LCD. Yeah, I'm not sure I really like it that much. Um, Mike said, I think I like the Sony way more. I don't mind the look of the camera, though, Mike, to be honest. I think it looks pretty good. Um, it looks quite well made, though. That's that's uh, one good part about it. Um, I am DeBanch just saying good day. Uh, Alex, after seeing this, now I'm so glad I recently switched to the a7 III. <laughs> Elric said phony. I know, that's what I said before it came out. That was so funny that I said that. I knew you guys would pick up on that. I sounded like Ken. Fraudulent slip. <laughs> D500 says a phony Sony shill. I love it. Uh, for everyone screaming they copied Sony Fuji, actually it looks more like the Panasonic G9 more than anything. Uh, I want, I just want a Sony 35 1.8 laugh out loud. Uh, looks great, very much like other Nikons now. Dial might work, um, work like basic Nikon, yeah. Uh, and I think that's what I can all that are saying that it probably will. The new Nikon is kind of ugly. I don't think it's ugly at all. It's a camera. I mean, it's a, it's a bit of gear. Sexy camera BNB film said. I find it looks uh, like a smaller version of the Nikon D750. I don't see Sony. Altrix saying hi. Um, Dick Savage said two-step process uh, for exposure compensation. Yeah. Um, looks like uh, looks like a grip to make it easier uh, to hinge the LCD down. Yeah, I think that is a little grip on the edge of it. It's got a little grip where you can hinge on that. Uh, the camera looks really nice. Um, what is the button near the hot shoe? Uh, oh, that, that button there, just let me come back to here. That's for your EVF. That, that's actually to control the EVF so you can uh, balance that to your eye if you're wearing glasses like I do. Uh, so that's what that's actually for. Um, 
My prediction of disaster is coming true. Interesting, Mike. Why do you say that? Now, all that was just a quick overview of this. I think I'm actually going to delete this video because there were so many problems with the mouse. And I might re-upload this again. Uh, not live. I'll just do it as a, a re-upload going through these um, uh, as well because I, I, it was a bit of a bugger up with that uh, mouse not working properly and the screen not updating so I might just delete this so at least you guys have been able to have a quick discussion about it uh, but I think I'll delete this one and then re-upload another one just quickly talking about the features that are actually in it and um, I'll do that as well yeah it's a diaptopeter uh, that little dial that's on the end um, so that's about it guys so stay tuned there'll be much more coming on about this in the coming days um, <laughs> Photomix said no don't delete man <laughs> The thing is, like, I think it was going all over the place. I'm not sure how much was uh, coming on the side and, and stuff like that. So uh, I'm not sure how much it was refreshing. I'll look at it in a second and just see how bad it is. If it looks bad like it wasn't uh, refreshing or updating the monitor because of the mouse, I'll delete it. So I'll have a look at it and just make a decision. Uh, it's going to be a sleeper. They uh, need a home run. Terry J Photography said, hi, David. Uh, any update uh, to you? Can no, I'm still waiting, Terry. I was meant to be getting a phone call this week. Um, I'm hoping they, they haven't let me down, but yeah, it's, it's, it is definitely harder here in Australia to get things like these lenses sent out to me and stuff. Uh, I'm going to have to try and organise something else if this doesn't come about, because I'm dying to try those Sigma lenses. Um, Photo Ike said, too many views on this, let it ride, bro. Well, thanks. <laughs> um, what else have we got? Uh, Krill said, isn't that soft dial on the right? Uh, yes, well, we're thinking, and according to Ike, and he's probably right, and a couple of others are saying that that dial uh, on the right is dual function. So what they're saying here is that, um, let me just see if this will update. There we go. Uh, they're saying that this dial here will be dual function, that if you press the exposure compensation dial over here, uh, that this will... Um, automatically turn to exposure compensation. If you're shooting manual over here, well then obviously you could have one as your aperture and one as your um, shutter speed. So they will be dual function and that makes sense to me. Uh, and thinking about it, yeah, I do think that's how it used to work with my D4S as well because I, I remember having that same button for exposure compensation. It's hard for me to remember because I very rarely ever shoot in A. I nearly always shoot in manual. So for me, that's, that's a little bit hard for me to sort of say uh, or remember back. I think oh, it's probably right. Uh, and Peter also said it as well, that you probably press that down and it will change that uh, as well. So I think that probably is the way that that's going to work. Um, di <laughs> diameter looks like Frankenstein's. Yeah, but you know what? Look, looking at that, guys, um, I actually think that's a good thing because I know on the Sony's particularly, let me just see if this will click back, um, on the Sony's, it's terrible to try and get to. It's this tiny, I don't know whether you can even see it. It's a tiny wheel that's inside here, right next to the viewfinder. So that's your diopter there. And when you turn it, it, it makes the uh, EVF balance or, or focus to your eye. Well, at least in this case, it's big enough that it's easy to get to. They're very, very hard to get to. I mean, if you're looking at the RX100, um, it's even worse because let me see if this will start. I think the battery is in there. Uh, in the in here, it's just a tiny thing on the top that when you pull this out, the EVF, the diopter is actually at the top up here. Uh, and I, I don't like that. I hate it actually, to be honest. But something like on the these ones, it's quite hard to use on the Sony's. A nice big one like that would be nice and easy to change. As long as it's not easy to knock, I'm, I'm hoping it would be quite firm so that when you're doing that, that uh, you know, you're not actually going to knock it and then have it uh, out of focus. But the Sony ones are really quite hard to grab onto. So I don't mind that being a lot bigger. But that's a personal preference. Um, See, if you don't have glasses like me, you probably never use it, so you never really even notice it. But because I have glasses, I use it all the time. Um, Ray's just saying hello. Uh, Grin said, singing here looks, looks so sexy and beautiful, and it makes me cry. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> um, Terry said, hi, David. Uh, any up... Oh, I went through that before. Um... Where are we? 
Most of the guys don't even own a camera. I'm not sure what that means. James said, who leaked it? I'll put that in. It's uh, Nokashita. Nok I'll put that in the link down below in a minute uh, for you guys so you can have a look. Um, nice night. Cool. Dave, cool breaking news. Will, restart your computer. That should fix the air. Will, Will. I just didn't have time to restart it. That's, that's what I will do after this. Um, Mick said typical Sony mouse. Yeah, but it wasn't just that. It also affected my uh, tablet. It also affected my um, little pointer here. So it was all of it for some reason. I'm not sure what's gone on. It must have started up a bit strange. Let me see if the um, pen works. Yeah, it's working again now. I don't know what was going on. It was a bit weird. Um, Altrick said, try the Sigma 35 1.3 uh, yesterday and love it. I, um, Chief Cherish said, I think Nikon is going to screw the pooch if they don't offer a package with an adapter. Also, No, well, I think the adapter is coming. Uh, it, everything I've heard is saying the adapter is, is actually with the camera. So when you buy the camera, the adapter's with it. So that, that's not an issue at all. Um, so Sharif, that, that's not an issue. And I think if you're a Nikon shooter, you should be very happy about that. And I've got a feeling the adapter is going to work really well. Because they haven't had to re-engineer this. This is being built from the ground up by Nikon. Excuse me. So I wouldn't be surprised if this works fantastic right from the start. Uh, it may not work as good as their native glass, obviously, but it might be usable, and that's really all you probably would need. Um, James said, do you see any progra programmable buttons on the camera? Yes, we did, because I'll show you. Um, there's a couple of them which are here and here. So it looks like there's only two uh, that you can use there. You might be able to uh, program other buttons, I'm not sure, but it looks like there's only two at this stage. Um, what else have we got? Chuck said, dial works via mode you are in. Yeah, and I think that's right. Fred and said that as well, Chuck. Um, Ibis should be good. Yeah, I re and I think you're right. Look at the look at the gap when you're talking about inside this lens mount. They have so much room in this camera that yes, I, I would be really surprised if the uh, Ibis isn't really amazing on this camera. And I hope that's the case. I've said to you all along that I hope this camera is an unbelievable success, and I hope that for all of you Nikon shooters that are out there, and it's also a great competition for us Sony users as well. I never want a camera to fail. Uh, and that's where I think differently than than some people, I suppose. Um, wait for the Sony A7S III to come out, uh, to come to our live. <laughs> yeah, I will be talking about that one. I put out a sneak peek of what I hope hope's in it the other day. I don't know whether you watched it, Dave. Uh, Brett, my God, the back dials are out from the body. Uh, are they? Let me just come up and have a look. Um, What do you mean by they're out from the body? I'm not sure. Do you mean they're sticking right out? Is that what you mean? I suppose that they'll be easy to, to touch. And, and I think ergonomically, I quite like that. I don't mind that actual idea, to be honest, about that. Um, the diopter might uh, also control brightness, possibly. That could also be another thing, James. Hadn't thought about that. Ray said, good looking device. Can Nikon and del uh, Canon deliver on first go round? I hope so. That would be fantastic. Um, Fedomik said, Dave Flint, two hour live and 400 concurrent views. <laughs> Thomas said, uh, this will slow exit of Nikon based users, but I doubt it will entice moves to Nikon for two to three years from Canon, Sony, Panny. And I don't think so. Look, there's really no reason if you've got Sony to shift to this camera. I mean, let's be honest about it. The only reason why I went from Nikon to Sony at the time was because there was nothing out there that was similar in full frame that could shoot video and stills. Um, now that I've moved over to Sony, there's no way known that I'm going to go and shift over to Nikon. There's no need for me to do that. I've got all the lenses that I need at the moment. Everything I, I've got, I, I, I have. I've got a 70 to 200. I've got a 35 mil, uh, 1.8. Uh, sorry, 1.4. I've got a 55 1.8. I've got an 85 mil 1.8. Uh, wide angle uh, lenses. There's no reason for me to shift over to going to Nikon. Now, if you what Nikon have done here is they may stop people from um, moving over 
to Sony, and that's what they're trying to do here, and this is clearly what Canon are also going to do. But there's no way as a Sony shooter, I'm now going to shift from Sony to, uh, to Nikon. And the same will be Canon as well. There's no reason for me, no good, it doesn't matter how good the Canon mirrorless is, there's still no real reason for me to shift from what I've got in Sony because Sony is working for me. And that's how you've got to think about this. It's not a competition in that respect. You should be happy with what you've got. I only shifted last time because there was a need for what I wanted to do, which was be shooting fusion for weddings and things like that, and to shoot video. And Sony have given me that ability to do that. This might be an amazing camera. It doesn't mean I'll never get one. I might get one. But it doesn't mean I'm going to shift over completely. There's no, no way that I'm going to be doing that. But it will stop people from shifting, I think, in the beginning. You know, if this works well and it's a good camera. Remember, we haven't seen the specs on this yet. We haven't seen how this, uh, the autofocus in video works on this. We don't know that yet. This is only sort of looking at how the, the camera body is itself. And I think the camera body looks quite nice. Uh, and I, I would be quite happy if I was a Nikon shooter. Um, AZ Chuck said... Uh, really too early to tell, but the Sony product seems to have far more customization capability via buttons on the body. Yes, and it does, but we still have to wait and see. But uh, you've got way more buttons on the Sony. Yes, looking at that. I'm not sure, though, how many of these buttons may be able to be changed uh, in functionality. You know, you might be able to change uh, these buttons, could be able to be changed. You might be, this might be a dual function button that you can change up here. Uh, you know, you may be able to change these buttons as well, depending on your need. Um, so there may be more than enough of what you can actually use on the camera. So we still have to wait and see in that regard. Um, James said they die up to my control brightness. Yeah, and I'm hoping that's correct. That would be great. Uh, Angel said, hello, David. Uh, Jav said, I meant the button on the side of the hot shoe. I didn't see a button on the side. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. It's a diopter. Um, Jarvis, uh, George said, how far is the sensor recessed compared to Sony? Does it affect the mount? Well, I don't, I'm not sure, but it looks like if you look at the images, um, it's hard to tell. You can't tell that from that uh, picture that you're, you're looking at here. The thing that I could say, and I do believe this could be a case, is it looks like it's got way more room to move. So IBIS may be better in this camera than what Sony can offer. You may... Wouldn't it be amazing if this camera could give you GH5 levels of uh, IBIS in a uh, full frame body? And you never know, they might be able to do that. That could be one of the, you know, different factors about this camera than what Sony can offer. The IBIS may be amazing. Um, so not sure about that uh, yet. Um, what else is there? Um, what else? Adapter and a battery charger, we don't know yet. That's not mentioned. Uh, 2470 f4, not f2.8. Yes, but you've got to remember, Nikon have to start somewhere with their adapted lenses, just like Sony had to start somewhere with their adapted lenses as well. Uh, when you're looking at these lenses, these are only the start, guys, remember? So Sony have to start somewhere. Now, they've offered here a 2470 f4 um, lens. Yes, it's f4, but high ISO of these cameras, this probably will be similar to what uh, the D850 has, and the ISO is amazing on that camera. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So I, I think that this probably would be usable. Um, and again, they have released two primes though, so you've got a 51.8 and a 35 1.8. That's only their start. They're then talking about releasing 0.95 lenses. It will only be a matter of time before they release 2.8 lenses. Uh, and also you've got the adapter here, which they're apparently including in their package as well, uh, which will give you the ability to run all of the other lenses that you have. I'm not sure about the D lenses, but it will give you the ability to run all your other lenses uh, through Nikon as well. We just don't know how well it will work. Um, so I suppose they, they had to start from somewhere uh, and F4 is just a start, so it'll come. Um, what else? Uh, Peter said, beyond the two buttons, you need to program yourself. Well, we're not sure whether you can reprogram all the other buttons. You might be able to do that. Um, Dave said, Nikon will soon be king. I love his little <laughs> <coughs> picture there. 
David, we think there is a possibility the border on the screen may have visible have buttons uh, visible when on. Hope they are customizable as well. I'm sure they will be customizable. Uh, AFM switch on the front is missing. Yeah, I'm not sure what they'll do about that. Uh, it'll probably have to be done through software, perhaps. I noticed on the lens though, uh, it had an A and an M. Uh, I'm not sure whether that was uh, for manual focus. It probably is. Um, what else? Daniel said it looks great. Yes, I think it does look great. Um, I need to see performance, James said. I've been holding um, to come to Nikon. James said, uh, wow, we did all this crazy, man. Oh, I'm not sure what that means. They're having a chat amongst themselves, I think. Um, James said, just leaked. Nikon has an adapter to use Sony lenses. <laughs> that would be funny. Um, Mike said, colour me Sony. Uh, Arian said, either way, there'll be third-party adapter like the MC11 or Metabones. Um, Mav fan said you can uh, tell sensor location from the top view little circle with line uh, use oh okay that's right yeah you can tell from that let's have a look because that's how you get your distance isn't it uh, let me see um, oh there yeah so that that will give you your send the distance there that the sensor is back because that's your that's your focal plane uh, so it'll be around about here so I'm not sure how that compares. It's similar to Sony, I think. If you look at the Sony um, one, if you look at your focal plane marker there, I think it's pretty similar. I'd say they're fairly similar. Um, oh, I hate the way that jumps. Um, Now I did hear yesterday in one of the comments, and I'm not sure where I read it, that the processor in this camera is meant to be, well it'll be the, the higher megapixel version, is meant to be better, slightly better than the D850. So if they're saying that, it's going to be a very, very good sensor. Now I'm not sure whether both bodies will be exactly the same, and that's what we're still waiting to see, whether both of these bodies are going to be exactly the same. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if they have a if the higher megapixel version that comes out has extra features. It could be something like the A9 where you have extra controls. They may do something on that. We don't really know yet. So we have to wait and see if both cameras will be exactly the same. Um, Matt said, yes, it's a 65 millimeter mount. Yeah, no, that's a really exciting thing. Uh, flange distance is supposedly 16 millimeters. Um, Photomix said, I just really like, still like a good digital SLR. No mirrorless is the future. Might as well give uh, digital SLR one last laugh. Uh, yeah, I mean, if this does well, it's going to be very hard for them to sell digital SLRs, that's for sure. Electronic first curtain shutter, we don't know. Um, it probably will have silent shutter, but we, it probably won't have the A9 shutter. I don't think anything can have that at this stage, unless you have the A9 sensor. James said, I bet uh, Nikon colors will be better than Sony. By the way, I have Sony. There's nothing wrong with Sony colors, James. Um, no extra button for IAF. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going to happen there. Uh, Casper said, Sony A9 is king. Yeah, but look at the price difference. There's a massive price difference between that and what this will be. I'm not sure about the higher megapixel one, though. Uh, Wolf said, the button next to the hot shoe is to the left of the viewfinder when looking at the back view. Oh, so there's a button. Oh, I see. Yeah, that, oh, I know what that is now. Yeah, okay, let me bring that back. Yeah, I think that button there is, is a button to change your EVF. It looks like it's the EVF and monitor button. So I see what you're saying now. Yep, so that little button there to me looks like a little monitor. So I think that's to switch the EVF off. It'll stop it automatically switching to it when you bring your body close to it. I think that's what that button is. Um, sorry, I didn't quite understand what you were saying about that. Um, Kerwin said, um, and the, interesting here, <laughs> Adrian's saying, I think Nikon colors is way off. Now, the reason why I chose Sony, particularly when I came from Nikon, was because the colors to me were identical. No one noticed any difference when I went from Nikon to uh, Sony, because at the time they're using Sony sensors. So really, the, the Sony and Nikon colors, are, I believe, are, are basically the same. I, I don't think any client would ever tell any difference between the two of them. Uh, and that's one of the good things about when I shifted over from Sony, because my work didn't change its look. Um, 
Where, what else have we got? Um, Chiku said, I really don't see any reason to jump from one system to another. Whether a new camera comes out, honestly, even my slow trusted Canon 6D takes great images. If you take time to learn how to use it. Yeah, and I can understand what you're saying there, but for me, I definitely would have shifted. Even though I was I, I shifted for Fusion, I would have shifted by now because Sony uh, because Nikon and Canon took so long to release a mirrorless camera. And I really do love technology and I wanted to move to the mirrorless marketplace. I love the EVF particularly. I just love that feature and how small these cameras actually are. So I would have shifted. It's about time that Nikon and Canon did release something and I could see that they could see the writing on the wall. So I, I think and a lot of people aren't going to like this, but th this is the future, no matter how you look at it as far as I'm concerned. Uh, digital SLRs will be around for a while, yes, I do believe that. They still be around. It might be like film, though, where they will disappear fairly quickly. I'm not sure. But if Nikon works fantastically with the adapted lenses and they can use all of their long lenses and you could do, shoot sports and things like this and stuff like that, it's only a matter of time before Nikon will bring out a sports version of that camera. Um, but it's the future. Uh, I mean, you may disagree with that, but that's just what I think. Um, Thomas said, uh, assuming similar features of an A7 III, if the 24 megapixel is over 199, uh, how can it compete with Sony? Well, it'll compete with Sony because basically um, it's got that marketplace already there. If you've already spent a fortune in Nikon lenses and you don't have to sell those lenses and they work well, people won't shift over. And this could be the thing that, the telling thing on this will be how well that adapter works. And I'm confident that the adapter will work quite well. Because this has been uh, made by Nikon, there's been no reverse engineering to get that adapter to work really well. I think it will work quite well. You can see here, if you're looking at it, that all the adapters are inside uh, here. Your, your electronic points are all there. Um, so it's it's clearly going to work with all those other lenses. So I've, I'm quite confident that Nikon will work well with their other lenses but we like I said we've we've got to wait and see how their video tracking is particularly that could be the difference at this stage it's taken Sony a, a quite a while three versions basically to get uh, the tracking to where it is now so it's going to be interesting to see if uh, Nikon can get that in in their first go and also the price is going to be an interesting thing if they're charging three thousand dollars for this base camera and you're getting an a7 III for two that's a thousand dollars is a big difference. Now it might stop people from um, moving over, but if you're coming new in the marketplace and you're seeing you can get this for two and you have to pay three for the Nikon, a lot of people will just go for the Sony. So pricing is going to be really interesting on this. And I think Sony really hurt the marketplace when they released that A7 III for that $2,000. That was an unbelievably clever strategy by Sony. I don't know whether you agree with that though, but I really do think that was an amazing strategy uh, from Sony. Um, so price, yes, is going to be important. If the rumors are true and they're going to say it's $3,000 minimum, it's going to be hard for them to sell that against an A7 III, which is two. Um, but remember that 3000 includes the adapter. Um, Photomix said, uh, plus I still value a big, bright, pro-level viewfinder. I like seeing my models in real life. Uh, like an EVF is cool, but there's something about seeing a real person through the viewfinder. Yeah, and I can understand that, Ike. Um, I would never give up the viewfinder, though. When I went to that Canon 5D Mark IV and I was using it against my A9, I hated it. But that's a personal preference. <coughs> George said, looking forward to the release. Uh, any information on the sensor used? No, there's nothing on that as well. Fatamix said, I love mirrorless for video, but for portrait photography, I could go either way. Um, Arthur said, there are two buttons on the hot shoe diapter and something else. I think, no, I think the um, other uh, button is for to turn the screen off. Uh, I think that's what it looked like to me. But you could probably program it to other things. Um, if it's more than 2,000, it's a flop. Well, they're saying it's three, but we have to wait and see. We don't know that yet. Um, Dave said he's 16th on his local store for the uh, Nikon. Uh, actually, like where they have the FM buttons, you can control without having to feel buttons. Yeah, it is good, and I like that on the G9, actually. Uh, 
when you you sort of come into here and you can just press the buttons down here to to I think on the I think when I had the D4S it was actually the aperture button you know that gives you that simulated uh, aperture look through the lens uh, I'm sure that's what it was uh, it, it simulates it through the um, through your LCD I think that's what it was but I, I like I'm quite comfortable now with all the buttons on the Sony but I can see why you're saying and it is next to your lens there. Um, Carl said, the Nikon colors look better on my uncalibrated un monitor. I love it. No, nothing about a grip. No, at this stage. Um, Epic Sky said he bought the A6000 a few minutes ago. Um, Fathom Rocker said, hi, David. A little late, but here nonetheless. Good to see you here. Hi, Michael. Good to see you in here. A uh, couple of minutes. I'll finish, guys, because I'm going to go get a coffee. Um, hi, David. Sorry I'm late, but uh, I've been working here in Port Macquarie, beautiful and sunny. Need to see some real-world tests of the new Nikon before deciding to buy. I'm sure it'll be a great camera. I, I don't think Nikon would have made a mistake on this. Um, Nikon will likely be uh, better sealed, uh, and I, I probably think you may be right. I think it will have good weather sealing. Um, Carl said, I wonder how long it will take before people start whinging about the lack of lenses. Well, Carl, it might depend on how well that adapter works. If the adapter works really well, th there is no problem with lack of lenses. Um, what is the sensor Nikon use? We don't know yet. Uh, Matt said, if the, if the mount is 65, can we estimate sensor size? It's just full frame, uh, looking at that. Uh, Kerwin said, I saw in Nikon rumors the price will be the same as the A7 III and the A7R III, Z6 for 2000 and the uh, Z7 for three. Well, that'd be good. If they price that at 2000 they've done a really good job, Kerwin, and I agree that would be great for them and great for Nikon. Uh, not tomorrow, two days from now. Well, I think it's if it's Japan, it's tomorrow, isn't it? Um, do you think that the... Oh, where was that? Do you think that the lens could get any better? I'm not sure what that means in, in get any better. Um, I don't think it's long until we see focus points talked about in 1K, 2K, 3K in the mirrorless world. Yeah, it's tomorrow night, bro. Yeah, I think it is. It's tomorrow night because it's Japan time. Um, Kerwin said, yes, for us it's the 22nd. We'll be the 23rd for them. Um, Brian said, now nah, 6 will compete with a price in the A7 III and the 7 will compete with the A7R. And I hope you're right, Brian. If, if they do that, Nikon have done a great job. And, and I think they have to do that. And what a great camera if you can get that for $2,000. I mean, if you're a Nikon shooter, you'd be jumping up and down. Um, what else? James has said um, the Z6 2500, the Z7 3500. Interesting. Uh, Wolf said, Nikon don't need customizable buttons. The way Nikon cams have always worked, uh, customization was never a factor. <coughs> Excuse me, I should have got a drink. Um, Epic Sky said, adapter won't be included. I've heard it is going to be included, so we'll know shortly though. Um, Java said Nikon price uh, this close or lower than the A7 III or they're done. I, I think they have to. I think it would be a really smart move to price that uh, as close to the A7 III as possible. I can understand if it's a fraction dearer if they include that adapter in it. Say if it was $2,400 and the adapter's included, I think that's acceptable. Uh, if it was $3,000 for their base one, that, that's not acceptable. Um, corona time, I wish. Um... Thomas said, will Nikon include a calibrated wall? <laughs> We're not going to go about that, Thomas. Um, Martin said, digital SLR is something our kids will be learning about in the history books, and I think you're probably right in the future. A lot of people aren't going to like that, but I think that's true. Um, a D850 with live view AF firmware upgrade would be the perfect camera. Well, I know they were saying that the upgraded version of this had a better sensor than the D850, so that is going to be an amazing camera if that was the case. Um, Fatamik said, can we talk about how Nikon had Brendan Wolfstein's advertising the camera? I was like, what the F Nikon? An Instagram filter photographer. I oh, know, look, I, this, this does my head in, honestly. And I hope that Nikon don't go down the same way that Sony do, honestly. Because it really gets to my, I, I hate the fact that Sony uses these Instagram so-called uh, influencers who aren't photographers to sell their cameras. And I, and I think that is the one area that Sony really could improve. 
So I do hope that, that Nikon don't go down that same track of using people that are just so-called Instagram influencers to try and sell these cameras because I think that would be a major uh, downside to this. They should be using people like Jerry Guionis. These are the people that they should be using to promote their cameras, or even people like you, Fanomiak, who shoot Nikon. Um, it does my head in the way Sony do that, honestly, and some of the people that they use, I cringe thinking, um, I know, look, they're trying to obviously sell this as a, a product to, to non-professional photographers, but still, it's it's not a good thing, and I, I do hate the way Sony do that. Uh, it, I, I don't like it at all. Uh, so it's interesting how you said that, Phonomiac. So Nikon are already starting to do it. Um, and he's saying here, uh, this is what it has come to. Followers equals clout uh, equals major opportunity. Yeah, and they need to change that. And I think that will change in the future because people are going to wake up to this, that these people aren't really using Sony or Nikon for the camera. They're using it because they're paid to do it. And that's what people have to wake up to with these so-called influencers uh, out there sharing their stuff for cameras like that. And I hate it. It really annoys me the way that, you know, you see these people that, that aren't photographers selling this stuff and trying to make out like they are photographers, and it, it does my head in. I'm, I'm totally with you, Fotomiak. Photo I think that's a bad thing to do. Um, any news about the autofocus? No, we're going to have to wait and see. It'll come out um, shortly. Brett said, don't forget that the Australian will pay another thousand. Yeah, we will, that's for sure. Um, Bala said, do you think the final teaser will showcase its video capabilities? Perhaps it may. Um, wonder how it will focus in the dark. I'm sure it's going to be uh, a good focusing camera. The D850 is fantastic. Uh, I'm sure that they'll have this focusing just as well. Carl said, one day, two hours, 30 minutes to go. Brian said, Nikon event is at midnight Eastern time, US time, one day, two hours. Uh, Dirk said, uh, time to shoot both Sony a7 III and Nikon Z6 uh, for weddings. Uh, I think it's going to be... Uh, I think it's going to be any good at video. We don't know. I hope it is. Uh, that's been their one weakness, so I hope they have solved that autofocus. Uh, Java said, poor Nikon, they're going to down with a two-ton digital SLR strapped around their neck. <coughs> they're obviously trying to save their pro line. I, I think that seems to be pretty good, though, this release, Java. I'm not sure why you're saying that's uh, not any good. Uh, Too Smart said, my... The, the major best thing about mirrorless, uh, no more AF fine-tune calibration. Yes, uh, that, that's true. Photomeric said facts, big facts. Yes, I agree with you, Photomeric. They've got to stop doing it. It's bad. Um, Jerry, Kenny said Jerry would be amazing. Yeah, they're the people they should be focusing on on this camera. Uh, Toko Vision said, do you think any of the cameras will have 4K 60p? I don't think the Nikons will at this stage. No, I'll be very surprised if they have 4K 60p. I think we're going to have to wait for the A7S to be the first one to have that at full frame. Uh, but that's what I think uh, for that as well. Uh, Grin said, I bought two extra batteries already in case not enough juice. Um, and that's it, guys. So we're up to date. Um, so that's about all for now. Any questions, leave down below. Sorry about the beginning on that. I'll, I'll keep this and I'll just put on the uh, beginning of the video that skipped to this stage due to uh, problems with the mouse. Um, apart from that, thanks for... Um, joining me today. Uh, please, if you can, give me a big thumbs up and follow me if you haven't subscribed. And I'll see you all again soon for the next video, guys. Uh, so bye for now. Have a great day, everyone. And I'll, I will do a live when the full camera is announced as well. See you later, everyone. Bye.